right, so we know that we can't bring shape keys into Second Life. And this is, I'm going to turn this animation thing off. Auto key, that's not good to have on unless you're actually using it. You end up goofing stuff up. Anyway, let me get rid of the material first so I can see what I'm doing on this. We know that we can't bring shape keys into Second Life. But you can bring some of this animation in, and with enough bones, you can get it pretty close. And since it's very erratic, so it looks like chaos, um, no one's going to know if it's done right, not even yourself. So just put them where you want, give them the influence you want, and I was good to go. I'll show you how to start this. Uh, but it has to be an animesh. You can't skin this to the avatar and expect the animesh portion to work as well. It's one or the other. And this is the other that will work. Skinning it won't work. So let's use our simulation tool to place bones on the item. The, ty the type of simulation we want is uh, dynamic. So click dynamics and click action. And then I want to start placing my anchors for bones. Now I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm going to put a couple of bones here as an example. So let me put bones where this bulge is. That's the most likely place where this thing is happening. And that's one. And it's too big. So let's just, uh, I'm going to hold the shift key down and reduce the size here. Then I'm going to go in here and call it, I'll take the minus sign out, call it a one. And that's good. I'll place my second anchor and then I'll say add bone right here. So now we have a bone that will be influenced by the shape key. And I'll place one more bone. Presumably this will also move. Add bone. Now I'm just going to do two bones here to show how this is done. And when I'm done adding my bones, I can just click uh, the done button. Now when you scrub through your anima animation, you'll see that the bones are moving. And you can retarget those bones. And when you do, you'll be able to pull the mesh out. The, the animation will pull the mesh out with whatever influence you want. And this one is smoothly influenced uh, by default. So you can reverse what this is doing and export this as a mapped mesh, I would, I would say. But you can use the converter too if you wanted. 